One design feature of these folding panels is the foam that they add to the covering. It obviously provides impact protection, but it also insulates the panel and prevents it from getting rid of heat to the back. So I'm going to sacrifice this panel in the name of science and see if we can get any improvement. Perfect. Well, there you can also see how it's wired. Two series and then three sets in parallel. Now it might look like you have six cellular units, but each of these have been split into six and any single piece of solar cell, silicon solar cell, provides a voltage of typically half a volt at full power. The only thing that differs with size is the amount of current it can produce. So we effectively have 12 individual little solar cells and that gives us our 6 volts at maximum power. We've got two new panels, one with the stock foam backing and the other one with the backside cleaned out. The panel with backing in place has a front temperature of 55 and a rear temperature of somewhere between 35 and 40. So 15 degrees C difference. The panel without any backing has exactly the same temperature front and back and it responds very quickly to breeze. Start this increase in breeze and it will quickly shed 5 degrees C. The panels are raised about 120 mm off the ground so that the breeze can have maximum effect on cooling. I followed exactly the same test procedure as in my previous videos using the hot wire cutter. So I'm not going to bore you with the details. I'm just going to get straight into the results. The stock panel is in red and the stripped out panel being the cooler of the two is represented in blue. Max power points at 16 watt and 16.7 and quite noticeable is the higher voltages at which the cooler panel performed. All the tests covered in my videos so far have been performed under full sun and clear skies. And ironically, those are not the conditions that have produced maximum power with these panels. So as a matter of interest, I'm going to include a test under overcast conditions and then also discuss the conditions that produced the very best performance. Today is very interesting conditions for testing. It's one of those overcast days with some tremendous amount of diffuse light coming off the clouds. I will be comparing the folding panel with a stripped out back with the polycrystalline panel. These results were also recorded at noon but the moving clouds continuously change the light intensity the panel's performance jumped all over the place, so I wouldn't read too much into this graph as a comparison between the two panels. It just shows you that uh, you can get a pretty decent power output even though it is completely overcast. Compare that with the results we got with the same two panels under full sun and clear skies. So what happens if you have partial cloud with breaks in between for some full sun to also fall on your panel. Well, what you get is this. Maximum benefit from the direct sun as well as diffuse light from all around. These results were recorded back in September, so the noon sun was only about 60 degrees above the horizon, but it was also nice and cool with cell temperatures only around 30 degrees for both these panels.